This year, The Bear won 21 Emmys, notably for acting and directing. But what I learned from the show was how to shoot with telephoto lenses. For the past three months, I've been trying to use Suray's 75mm f1.2, a 112mm perspective for APS-C, and The Bear taught me five lessons on how to get more texture and frame through this field of view. The series was shot on many exotic lenses. Voyeurism of the second camera constantly on a very long zoom. But the most striking scenes were shot with the focal length already in your collection. This video is not sponsored and more importantly has no spoilers for the bear. Suray did send me this 75mm lens and as always I have final edit. Hello I'm Jack scientist, street photographer, and this is Bokeh Therapy. My day job can be cutthroat and chaotic, and watching Kami's never-ending hunt for kitchen efficiency felt cathartic, but the character I related to the most, Richie, I too am set in my ways. My photography lens choices are a delicate ecosystem, but I've been trying to expand my palette. With this Suray 75, you can get incredibly thin depth of field. There's not too much of vintage swirl or bubbly bokeh, but all I could fit was one, maybe two elements in frame, and it can all feel a little lifeless. I know cinematography isn't the same as photography, but lesson five that I learned from the bear was how much more color matters when the framing is tight. Ambient tones in the shadows, the warmer glow coming from outside the restaurant, a hint of faded blue here, a desaturated red textured wall there, and visual layers are being added without adding more objects into already crowded scenes. I noticed the use of color most when it was taken away. In the flashback scenes, everything looked eerily pristine and white, and the telephoto look seemed to leech the life out of those isolated frames. It's reminiscent of shooting against the bright midday sun, washing out my exposure and color, but you can't always add warmth back to the edit by upping the kelvins in your white balance. You have to do this with a delicate touch, it can look a bit overprocessed. Lesson 4 I learned from the bear was how to add warmth into the frame more naturally by motivating the light. All you highfalutin cinematographers already know how to do this, but as a street photographer I'm still learning. Adding a light source in frame, neon tubes, tungsten bulbs, or oncoming traffic it sets the viewer's expectations on where the light should be coming from in the scene. Especially if you put in a gradient mask against the bulb, now when you make the frame a little warmer in post, it won't look as artificial. You also get the added bonus of light bouncing off the back, the side, or the front of faces, not to mention shiny surfaces, which adds even more texture to the scene. But for lenses, this tends to be where aberrations rear their ugly head. For this Suray, it's very clean, minimal fringing, very little CA, even wide open. I couldn't get it to flare that easily. Maybe it's not the character look you want for high-end cinematography, but for photography, optically there aren't many compromises. Everyone compromises at some point, but we all just want to feel wanted, just like Richie, I've been struggling to find my purpose. I can't bring my full self to work. The things I'm good at, the things that excite me, just don't seem to matter as much in that professional context. But maybe this is how it's supposed to be. Is it too much to ask to feel wanted? Lesson three from the bear involved the use of foreground. It's hard to get background separation when shooting in tight spaces, but it's comparatively easier to get foreground separation. Longer lenses won't have the right minimum focusing distance, so letting reflections off a shiny cooktop or a trail of dirty pots and pan adds more texture. The bear shot kitchen scenes on two cameras, an A cam and a B cam. Voyeurism of the second camera constantly on a very long zoom, 40 to 400. This gave the production team so much flexibility to blur out the foreground at a moment's notice. But you don't need 400 millimeters to get this effect. You can do it with the Suray 75 millimeter and its close focus distance of 0.7 meters. At f1.2, you can get both background and foreground separation. But when there are all these objects at different focal planes, the autofocus can struggle 
on a Fuji film body. When I shot with the Fuji X mount version of the lens, I just stuck to single point autofocus. I didn't bother with face and eye tracking, just back button AFS on the smallest focus point. This isn't this lens's problem, it's a Fuji film problem until they fix their firmware, hopefully at the next X summit. So I'd buy this lens either a Nikon Z mount or Sony E mount with its more reliable autofocus systems. Even though Suray is not as sharp as the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 Pro, although I'm not sure what lens is sharper than that Viltrox, it's sharp enough. Plus its carbon fiber lens barrel makes it very lightweight to hold in comparison to the 670 grams of the Viltrox. About 375 grams is very manageable on a Z50 or a ZFC for Nikon or an A6700 if you're a Sony shooter. Lesson two from the bear was to lean into the abstract, choose a composition that makes the thing you're focusing on almost unrecognizable. Is it some kind of dial or switch, source or zhu, broken glass in the middle of nowhere? Pure abstraction can be confusing as a storytelling device for a single frame, but it can encourage the audience to fill the gaps with their imagination. It's easy to get this look on longer lenses, the 40 to 400 mil on the bear's B cam, but you don't need a telephoto for this effect. Photographers and whoever think that they need to be very far away in a long lens, you want to be intimate and you want to feel like you're a part of what they're doing, their process. In fact, the famous one -er in episode seven of season one, the nightmarish 20 minute sequence of breakdowns all in one take, was shot on their A-cam with a 50 millimeters. We needed a lens that could do it and we didn't know how to do it yet. We found a 50 millimeter, uh, it, was a, it was a T2, so it wasn't as fast as some of their faster lenses, but it still was in the family. There's just no time to switch out lenses all in one take. It's amazing how many different anxiety inducing scenes they managed to capture with only this focal length and we all have a nifty 50, right? What's the point of shooting telephoto when a 50 can give you these kinds of results? It comes down to the final telephoto lesson I learned from the bear, lesson one, let it rip. No abstraction or visual gimmicks, just a super close up of the right subject in frame. Kami's close but distant, vulnerable yet removed in a seven minute confessional about misdirecting energy in his professional life. It's a simple frame, muted in tones, minimally lit, but a powerful image nonetheless because it's the right subject at the right time. And this is why despite these lessons, I still struggle shooting telephoto. I'm still looking for a project worthy of the close up. The kind of work that makes me feel wanted. But like Kami and Richie, through this channel I found the people I want to connect with. You can find the next video about another focal length I'm trying, perhaps the most underrated lens in the Nikon Z lineup here when it's ready to go. I'm Jack, trying to capture peace in every moment.